All right, we'll give it two more minutes for anyone else to join and then we'll make a start. Sweet. Today, anyone who's just walking in, we're using the um, annotation tools. So they are, if you go options, annotate, you can find them there and then write the first movie you remember watching. So just for anyone joining us, I'll just take us back to here. I won't clear the annotations, we'll go back to them, we'll just leave them there. Uh, but that's what you're going to need to do. So the view options, click down. Click on the annotate option just there. And pop in the first movie you ever remember watching. Okay, well, it's just ticked over to 405, so it might get us um, started along the way. Um, hopefully, you've got your annotation tools working. So I'm going to clear those all now, and we'll move on to the next one. So if you want to use your annotation stamp, um, let us know your experience with microbits. Um, here at the ACA, we are firmly in the there are microbits everywhere corner. Um, they're falling out of bags, they're like in cars, we've got them in the brickwork. Honestly, I've never, didn't realise you could have so many in so many different places. I moved to Tassie on like a day's notice earlier in the year. I thought I bought maybe one or two microbits. Turns out there were like five in my bag. <laughs> Just pockets yeah. of various clothes and items. Totally everywhere. Oh, never seen one in real life. Well, we have a treat for you. <laughs> go into it heaps in a second but that's one of my real life ones that's not part of it battery well. attached, to, attached to the side so they're kind of mini computers smaller than a credit card really flat with Alrighty. these dots really LEDs. so since we have a few people that are kind of experienced I am gonna uh, still go through kind of the basics but we'll do it at a bit of a bit of speed um, and if you're after more information, uh, we'll have the slides downloadable later. Um, so you can go into this in more detail, but you're also absolutely welcome to email us or contact us. Uh, the details are on our website. Um, so moving to the mouse, the microbit. So um, as Penny was saying, uh, it's a small computer, um, quite a few features here. We've got a five by five of LED displays, two buttons, you've got your A button and your B button. I might put my spotlight on actually, there we go. Um, an accelerometer, and what that means is that um, the micro bit knows which way it's facing, whether or not it's facing up, facing down. If it's been shaken, it can detect that. If it's been thrown up in the air, it can detect that as well. Uh, a magnetometer, which is a compass, um, which is quite fun, but I wouldn't trust it to get me out of bushland, let's put it that way. Um, it's not that reliable. Uh, it has a temperature sensor as well. The temperature sensor, it's important to note, um, works on one degrees variation. So by that I mean it'll know the difference between 29 degrees and 30, but it won't know the difference between 29 and a half degrees and 30 degrees. So if you are going to use the temperature sensor, we recommend using it to measure um, pretty decent variations over time. Uh, for example, you're looking at the temperature from the whole day as opposed to if I put it in a hot box for half an hour, is it going to change? Um, you probably won't see the kind of changes that you'd want. Uh, you've got Bluetooth and radio as well, which we're going to be using today. And then pins, these are the pins here, 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, and then your ground wire. And you can connect that to other devices, but you can also just make toys out of aluminium foil as long as it conducts electricity. Um, and attach those to the pins just using the alfoil and uh, play little games that way. 
uh, different ways you can program them. Um, if you have, if you're a school that is an iPad school, you can absolutely program microbits. Um, you can do it in the MakeCode app um, using Blockly, uh, and that will um, get onto your microbit using Bluetooth. Or if you have um, computers, you can use a USB cable, and that way you can do um, the same MakeCode platform, or you can use Grok Learning. We don't admit, we don't recommend uh, using it for both, because um, if you program a microbit with Grok Learning and you download code onto the microbit, um, it actually wipes the ability to download from the MakeCode iPad app using the Bluetooth. Um, you can put it straight back on, it's easy, you just have to use a USB cable, connect the micro bit and download a make code, code onto it, even if it's blank, and that'll reinstall the Bluetooth. But if you find that you've used it to um, code with Grok, and then you're trying to connect it to a Bluetooth iPad, and you're having trouble, that could be a problem. If you have any issues with that, send us an email, and we can explain that a bit further. Um, so this is the make code platform, we'll get to know it a little bit better um, in a minute. Um, but this is our plan for the rest of the webinar today. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up with a small project together and code that starting kind of from scratch in make code using the basics. Then after we've built that small project, we're going to look at the curriculum coverage that you get out of that small project. But then we're going to look at different ways that you can expand your coverage by adding classroom activities to the beginning end and middle of the project. So what we're going to make today is a microbit messenger. So to start with, we're actually going to head over to make code and get our basics done. So these are the basics that you'll want to teach your class. So you want to head over to makecode.microbit.org. I'm just going to pop that in the chat window if I can find it. I can do that. Oh, yeah, Penny's going to pop that in the chat window for you. Um, it does use cookies, so I haven't logged in, but it's got a couple of the projects that I've been working on of the last couple of days. Um, so if you do have shared computers, you will find that products tend to hang around. But this is your basic microbit make code coding platform. So on the left hand side, this is really powerful. This is the microbit simulator. So if you don't have a physical microbit, you don't have to have one to learn how to code them. Um, and if you do have physical microbits, encouraging your students to use the simulator as a testing resource is going to save you so much time. Um, because the time it takes to download, get it on the bit, plug the battery in, make it do the thing, find out it doesn't work, um, get them to test like crazy with your simulator up here. So the way that we code it using blocks is on the right hand side, this is the workspace. And to code it we use blocks which are hiding in these drawers here. So we're going to start with um, just a really basic LED display. Drag up, you can either click on it or you can drag it out drag it back in here to delete. So we're going to show some LEDs forever here. Uh, let's start with something really simple. We want to get a smiley face on our micro bit. Click on here and when the simulator colors up, there you go, that's it running. So as you're making changes, it'll gray out as it tries to pick up on those changes, like adding a nose. But once it's loaded them into the simulator, it'll color up again. Um, next thing we can do is make the world's simplest animation. So to do that, we just need two image blocks that are different. This, for example, and then just this one in the middle. Load that one up. And that is a micro bit animation. So that is using the LED builder. We can also make something something up. So can anyone tell me what animal that is trying to be? <laughs> Any suggestions? A turtle with a gap in its shell. Ah, uh, look, turtle with a sunroof. <laughs> very, very tempting, very down. good idea. <laughs> but uh, no, that's a little frog. That's just a random drawing of a frog. Half a mushroom. I like it. Half a mushroom. Very good. Um, so that's just a little frog that I've put in there. And if I wanted people to know what it was, we can make a little animation that shows the string and tells everybody that we have put in a frog. So if we wait for this to load up, 
and then here we have frog scrolling across here. Um, new bit of vocab for students will be string. String is the way we refer to sentences, letters um, in code. It is different to showing a number. So if I drag in our show number block and I want to tell everyone it's a frog, uh, that nice little bit of red tells me that something's going wrong. And then if I click away, it's actually not even going to let me put it in. MakeCode's actually very good at doing the best it can to stop you from coding in bugs by either straight up just not letting you do it or highlighting it big and loud for you. Um, but that is the beginning of something that I like to encourage, which is called the um, play, break, get help, fix, repeat thing. Um, so especially with things like make code and programming in general, if you really want to encourage kids to play around with it as much as they can, break it well, in the code sense, not in the hardware sense, um, seek help to fix it if they can't do it by themselves, um, and then just do it all over again, see, so that they can uh, get used to pushing the limits here. So if I did want to replace that with an actual number, for example, four, um, that's going to allow me to do that. Uh, and I think the next big thing we need to know in our basics is uh, how to use the buttons. So we have this button here, button A, and what can we do in button A? We can show one of the preloaded pictures. So if we click on the down arrow here, we can show my favorite animal, which is the giraffe. So if we go to our simulator, the color means it's loaded. Push button B, something's happening. But if we push A, there's our giraffe. All right, let's just have a review of my notes here. Ah, yes. So if I bring back our animation really quickly, um, do, 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 to get it onto our micro bit, like this, uh, you just want to head down here to the download button. So if I click that, we have this pop up here, and it's just going to appear in the bottom right hand corner. Click on the arrow and say show in folder. Use all my downloads. And then what you need to do is drag it into your C drive, just like that. Um, sorry, is drag it to the micro bit once you've plugged it into your computer. Uh, and I believe Penny has a live demo. So if I just stop sharing for a second, I think Penny's got a live demo. Yeah, so if you can see mine large enough on your screen, if I just download it, got my code now, I've named it square, download it to my micro bit it'll start loading and you can see it flashing on the background as the code goes onto it. It'll only take a few seconds. So it's finished now. If I turn it over, you can see the squares flashing. And I actually kept the old bit of code. So if I press button A, the draft will show up just for a little bit. And I'll go back to the flashing. Awesome. All right. So now if I jump back into the screen, just here. We go back to our slides. We've just got a quick summary of our basics there. Um, the one thing I didn't show uh, just in that little demo was if you bring out two button, um, button pressed icons, one is grayed out. Does anyone have a suggestion why that might be in this little code snippet in the bottom left here? Any suggestions either in the chat or text annotation? It's actually because both of these say button A pressed. Um, so what this means is that on button A pressed, the computer won't know which one to do. You can't have both. Um, so it literally won't let you have this mistake in your code. So if I change that to button B, then it will color up and fill in. Um, but that's another example of make code being really good at trying to help kids uh, not code in bugs. Um, so that's a great little troubleshooter if you get to the... So we've got Peter saying race conditions there as well. So a race condition is if two things are trying to happen at once and you don't know which one's going to happen first. So that's not ideal in your code. Ideally, you want to know exactly what's going to happen. So make code ahead of time saves you from that problem and just grays out one. So make code's on your side here. Yeah, it's, it's a very good, so again, and just drawing attention to this, the play, break, get help, fix, repeat cycle. It's going to be a really valuable cycle if you can um, encourage the kids to get help to fix their code and make their life a lot faster as well. 
Um, and the next little bit of basics we're going to learn is how to make our radio work. So if we go back into our make code, the first thing you want to do to get your radio working is to set radio group whatever. Um, so think of this, it's sort of similar to um, channeling your radio to 101 point whatever. Um, it's not exactly the same, but um, it's to make sure that you're tuned into your micro bits and the group next to you is sending messages and they're tuned into their micro bits. So if you have two groups next to each other, one should be on radio set group one, the next group should be radio set group two and so on and so on. Um, it actually goes all the way up to 255. And I have to say, if you do have 255 students using micro bits on that many radio signals, please take a photo and send us because it would just be awesome. It would just be the coolest thing to see how they cope with that. Um, anyone know why it's 255? Any nerds out there? Right in the chat and we'll come back to you. <laughs> Yeah, we'll come back to that one. Um, so let's just leave it at 255 for now. So what that means is anything that our radio bit, um, micro bit does with the radio is going to be sent out or received. It's going to be looking for code on 255. Um, so what do we want to do? We want to send some stuff over the radio. So we're going to need a radio send string. It's grayed out because we haven't told it when to do that. So we'll pop it in our forever block, which means our radio is going to be forever sending a string. Let's send a string that says radio. So we've got a second micro bit in our simulator now, and they're highlighting the radio just in the top right hand corner there. Um, an important thing to note the simulator can't simulate the radio talking between two micro bits. Um, so, for example, if I added on received string show string, and then I drag this in here it kind of looks like, when I play it, it kind of looks like one micro bit is sending this string to another one, but they're actually just both sending and receiving the same string. Um, but you can kind of hack it around to make it look like it is um, sending from one to the other. Um, but in order to do true radio, you will need two different micro bits. So a little demonstration of our kind of hack there is instead of, playing the string, let's say, when you receive it, let's show a love heart, and then we'll clear. And then we we'll use on button A pressed to make it a bit easier for us. So what this code is doing, sets the radio group to 255. When we press button A, it's gonna send the string radio. When the other micro bit receives the radio string, it's gonna show a love heart and then clear the screen. So if we head over here to our simulator, nothing's happening. Press button A. So that little flash was the radio signal. And there's our love heart. So you see the radio send. So that's a good way to kind of simulate the radio working without the physical ones. Um, a good way to do it if you are in person is uh, to get the kids to send their name. Let me spell my own name, that'd be good on their micro bit. That's all the code you need for the students. And then you would have the teacher's micro bit go into radio, on radio received string, show string, and then you drag in the variable there. And the teacher's micro bit will need this bit of code. And so every time a student sends their name, the teacher's micro bit is gonna be scrolling the names over and over and over again. All right, so that's our basic micro bit introduction. Um, obviously that would take a bit more class time than we've zoomed through now, um, but it just goes to show what you can learn in about five, ten minutes. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take those basic skills that we've learned with our showing and with our radio and we're going to build a small micro bit communicator project. So we've decided to settle an ice cream showdown question and come up with a champion flavor. So we're going to need everyone to use their annotation tools for this next bit, because it's going to get pretty serious and there's some serious ice creams on the line. Um, so the way this is going to work, we're going to do a championship tournament. So it's going to be, let me just get my annotation tool up here. So it'll be held in three rounds. The first round, chocolate versus vanilla. Second round, strawberry versus banana. 
and then the finals to determine the champion. So if you could all get your stamps out and ready, we are going to do the first round. So please stamp in the box for chocolate if you want to vote chocolate, whoops, or vanilla if you want to vote vanilla. No double stamping. I can see you, Penny. I see you double <laughs> stamping. <laughs> Don't make me turn on the names. We will know. I see you, Penny. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to ignore Penny's little graffiti art. Bit of fun there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this is this round is just chocolate versus vanilla to start with. I'm going to give that fifteen more seconds. It's tight, but it's looking. I haven't actually voted. I'm going to abstain. I might as well end up swaying the vote. All right. So the winner for the first round is going to be vanilla. All right, uh, and so second round, we're gonna do strawberry versus banana. So I'm gonna clear all the annotations, including Kenny's beautiful drawing. Um, and if everyone can stamp their preferred flavor. Oh, clean sweep. <laughs> it is an obvious winner. Our, this oh, is gonna a bit be of serious. support <laughs> for the banana. Oh, a little, yeah, a little bit of something for, uh, for the strawberry there. Um, okay. So congratulations to Strawberry. Beautiful. Right, so this is going to be the final. It's going to be between vanilla and strawberry. So I'm going to clear annotations and then actually clear those, write out our vanilla. And we've got strawberry. Beautiful. All right, three, two, one, go. Votes, people. How oh, that you have? Oh, it's looking like vanilla. Going to give it ten more seconds. Hiya. How about that? And that's vanilla. And it looks like the winner for our competition is a resounding. Do -do -do -do. Congratulations to Team Vanilla. Um, so, quick question. Can anyone see the algorithm here? There's actually a pretty awesome algorithm going on. Uh, just a really simple one. If this one gets more votes than that one, then it's in the final. Then, if this one gets more votes than that one, it wins. Else, that one wins. Um, it's a simple little algorithm, but it is definitely there. Um, so now what we're going to do is the same but different. So we've changed it up just a little bit and there is a reason for that. So we'll do another really quick round of Ice Cream Champion. Um, but this time it's going to be quite different. So this time you'll need to use your text tool and in the voting area you'll need to choose whether you vote for A or whether you vote for B. Um, I've made the ice cream flavors a bit more competitive this time, a little bit less obvious who's going to win. Um, so take a moment to think about who between Caramel Macadamia and Turkish Delight you would like to win. And then I want you to put your vote in the voting area, for example, A or B. It doesn't matter where, but it should be in the voting area. All right, I'm going to clear mine. And if you want to put your votes in for me, please. Between Caramel and Turkish. Mm. Oh, it's a clean oof. Turkish delight's getting smashed. Alright, we have a clear winner. Oops. Well, Amy is our winner. Alrighty, so we're gonna do the same thing again, but this time. It'll be between Ferrero Rocher and Blood Orange Chocolate. So if you want to vote in the voting area, please, with A or B, I'll give you 15 or so seconds. What's a bit tighter? A bit closer. Ferrero Rocher is sneaking ahead. Any other votes? Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So that is Ferrero Rocher for the win. So just get this out here. We have Caramel Bacadamia versus Ferrero Rocher. Um, let's 
just use this one here, get these all gone. Beautiful. Um, if you want to vote for either Caramel Macadamia with A, Ferrero Rocher with B, you have 15 seconds and go. Who will be the champion? Oh, tied even. Oh, Ferrero Rocher inching ahead. Any final votes? We've got five, four, three, two, one. And by one vote, it is Forever Rocher, the ultimate ice cream champion. Fantastic. So that was a little bit of fun, but uh, why did we change things up the way that we did? Well, in our second one, we were simulating the way that we are going to vote with microbits. So we had one voting location. Uh, and that was going to be our receiver microbit. And we were all being little voter microbits, sending out A's or B's to the receiver in the voting area so that they could be tallied. Um, so that is what we're going to quickly whip up in MakeCode next as our smaller project. So what I have done, um, I have actually built up the code for these. So we are going to need two separate projects. The first one is going to be our receiver bit, this one here. Actually, we'll start with the student one and the second bit of code is going to be the receiver. So we'll start with the student one here. So I have it all ready to go. Right, so what's going on here? The student microbit needs to send either A or B depending on their vote. So we've made it simple by aligning it with the buttons. So on button A pressed, radio send string A and then we've also put in show string A. This is to give them a bit of student feedback. So if I just took this out, just leave it grayed out. Um, when the student presses A, it's radioing. You can see in the top right hand corner. But if it was a physical microbit, you wouldn't be able to see that. There'd be no feedback. So we pop that in there so that at least when the student runs their code, they can see that something is happening. And we've done the same thing for B. And that's set on radio group one and then if we go back we have our teacher micro bit so there's a bit more here but it's not too bad so same thing we're going to start with radio group one that way we're listening and we're sending on the same channel we can we need to count our a's and b's so we're going to set a count variable a count to zero and a b count variable to zero what I've set it to do as well is show A and then the A count variable, then B and the B count variable. And you can see that on the left hand side, the micro bit doing A, B, A, B, and it's not receiving any votes, so it'll stay at zero. What it is doing is it's waiting to receive the A's and B's that the student micro bits are going to send. So if it receives an A, it's going to add one to the A count. If it receives a B, it's going to change the B count by one. And the last thing that we've added in here is a reset capability. So you do actually have, and I know my video is quite small, but on the very back of your micro bit, there is a reset button just here. But it is good to explicitly code in some sort of reset that will get your variables back down to zero. Um, and you might have noticed as I hovered, I have this little the micro bit is moving, that's because it does simulate the accelerator to a point um, in the make code blocks. So that is our basic project just here. Now, um, Penny, I believe you have one prepared earlier. One prepared a little bit earlier. So I wish I could get you all to vote in this, but unfortunately the radio on these things only reaches about 30 meters and I think we're scattered across Australia. So using my collection of micro bits, we've got one I prepared earlier. So here's the micro bit. This is just an external battery pack. You can see it's going through A equals zero, B equals zero at the moment. Now if I get a student micro bit, which I've programmed just with a little picture on it so I can tell that it's turned on and working. And I press button B and we wait for the count to update on the B micro bit, we can see it's gone to one. So that's one student's vote. Grab another student's vote and they can go A. We can see A is updated on the teacher micro bit as well. And I've got one more micro bit. I think it's programmed. 
and it's going to send A as well. So now A is at 2. Um, now here we can see the problem with this. So if the student over here is just a little bit cheeky and really wants to win, they can just press A again and again with no consequence. And you can see A is now up to 6. So just like we can cheat in the online Zoom voting by pressing a button multiple times, our students can do exactly the same. So it's just a little simple microbit project for you. Awesome. Um, and if anyone has any ideas how to stop the cheating, feel free to pop them in the chat um, and we'll be more than happy to chat about those a little bit later. Um, right. So let's jump back into my screen here. So this is the code. And again, um, if we're going quite fast, we are a bit tight for time. So we have got all of uh, the slides. They will be made available. And I'll put a link to this project as well uh, in Make Code so that you can download it yourself. So now that we've built our little project, what we want to do today is go through it piece by piece and uh, just look at where we're touching the curriculum. Um, the digital technologies curriculum specifically. Um, this is essentially going to be what we already offer with the um, courses that we have made on the Grok Learning Platform at the ACA. Uh, we've got them mapped on the website. So I can actually just, I'll just show really quickly. So if you head to resources, so for example, we're using some microbit today. Uh, you can filter by microbit. And you've got all these different choices. Um, this little bar along here gives you an idea of some of the curriculum coverage. If you click through to it and scroll down, uh, you'll see this is for years designed for years five and six. And each of the elements that it covers is in a color. And if you hover over that, it'll give you a bit more detail about the element. Uh, what do I mean by elements? I will show you exactly what I mean. When you break down the digital technologies curriculum, you have um, the basic content descriptor, which is this one here. I'm sure we're all quite familiar with the content descriptors and the ACARA codes. Um, but when you break it down by year level, it's broken down into these, what we call elements. Um, and so what we'll be doing is looking at each of the elements and whether or not we've covered those. And if you are able to touch on each element, in one content descriptor, then you've been able to touch the whole content descriptor there. Um, so for example, we can look at this one here, peripherals and components. Students understand that external devices can be connected to digital systems to expand their functionality. So if we talk about the micro bit and it has an accelerometer, it's got pins, we attach some stuff, we are able to say that we've touched on this element and that's the kind of granularity that we're gonna go through. Um, one thing I will say, just because of size, I wasn't able to fit the full description of every element on the following slides, um, but they are going to be linked. Um, so I'll just have the, um, the content description and the titles. And if you want to read more about them, there will be links that you can click on. Um, but please do head to our Unpack the Curriculum page on the website and play around. You can look at the different band levels that you're aiming for and uh, go into those into depth. Um, so this is the way that I've represented it for us. So this is going to be a breakdown for the three to four band. Uh, we have all of our content descriptors on the left hand side for the three to four band and the titles of all of the elements just here. And again, if you click on that, it'll take you to here where we've got them highlighted. And uh, yeah, you can have a play around with our Unpack the Curriculum page on the website. All right, oopsies. So looking at the project that we've just done, this was the example I just showed you. We've looked at the peripherals and components. We touched on that by talking about the different parts of the micro bit. What else did we do? We looked at different representations. We had our little frog there and how we talked about how it was different to a picture of a frog. And then we had to scroll the text frog as well and the way that that is different. We did some data collection. We got everyone's opinions on the different types of ice cream and added them up. Then what did we do? We interpreted that data so that we could come up with an ice cream champion. We also followed an algorithm to determine the champion by looking at two. We compared them, the most popular, moved on to the next round, and then we did the same thing again. Um, we could write, going into more detail, we could definitely write that as an algorithm. 
We also um, made some decisions when we talked about the different decisions we would be making with that algorithm. It's important to note that this isn't um, coding it. That will come in implementation down here. Um, the algorithms is just more in the stage of defining and thinking about the different um, branching decisions that we'll be making. Uh, we implemented a digital solution by building it. We used some user input by getting the user to press the buttons to send the messages. We coded some branching by using our if statements here. And technically the input is an if statement, but um, you'd need to expand on that a bit more. And we worked in visual programming because we were working in Blockly. So if you look at that, that's actually a decent amount of curriculum coverage for a small project. But now what I wanna do is look at ways that you can add some classroom activities. We're gonna see if we can expand that coverage even further. So the first thing we wanna do, uh, our specification. So before we actually dived into our um, ice cream challenge, if we talk about what problem is being solved, for example, the class needs to buy ice cream for everybody, how do we choose which one? Can we compare that to any problems that might be similar in our lives? Um, can we do a class vote? Can we come up with a way, what's the best way that we're gonna come and determine which ice cream we're gonna buy? By having these discussions and expanding on that, you're hitting that specification point. Um, as well, if you're talking about how are we gonna use the micro bit to solve this problem? By specifying how you're gonna do that, you'll get that curriculum point hit all the way. Uh, visualize data. So one thing we didn't do is get everyone's favorite ice cream, come up with the pop most popular four and use those. If we did that and then we turned it into a graph and we talked about what kind of graph we were gonna use, we would be covering this visualized data element. Something else we haven't done, um, access data. So I did a quick Google and I was able to find Japan's most popular ice cream flavors. There's a surprising amount of ice cream related data out there. Um, so getting students to do some Googling and come up with some answers, we'll be able to cover that element as well. Um, representing algorithms. Um, like I mentioned, uh, there was definitely that algorithm that we followed um, to come up with the winner. But by being more explicit when you're talking about the tournament diagram with the class, you can also cover this represent algorithms element. The same with the sequence of steps. Um, we didn't actually sit down and walk through the steps we were gonna take before we programmed them, but by coming up with a flowchart for them and walking through them before we start, we'll be able to cover that element as well. And finally, testing digital solutions. It's kind of implied that something's gonna break at some point, but just to be explicit here, um, run some tests, come up with some expected output. Did it happen? Why, why not? And coming back to that play, break, fix, repeat loop, as long as you're explicit about that, you'll have that covered as well. So with a couple of extra surveys and some discussion points, we're actually able to cover a load of the digital technologies curriculum for years three and four. Um, Let's have a look at this one here, data types. So I put the description in. Students describe different types of data, e.g. numbers, letters, pictures, and how they can be used. Can you think of a way that you would incorporate this into this project? Does anyone have any ideas? Feel free to unmute um, if you'd like or send us something in the group chat. Penny, any ideas? You're voting using um, letters already, so I guess you could either we've got graphs in the group chat as well. You make a graph of the result. Um, that's mm -hmm. definitely on the representation side. So I guess for data types at this level, you're talking um, tallying it up with a number, uh, sending letters as a description, or having a picture. If maybe if you reach a threshold, you kind of get oh, this one's one, or this one was lost. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if we think about the diagram that we had before when we were looking at chocolate, vanilla, banana, strawberry, um, the colour of the box is there. Um, if you asked someone to vote on ice cream and you gave them a pink piece of paper, a white piece of paper, a yellow one and a brown one, would that be an accurate way of determining, like, would they know what, you, what they were voting for with these coloured pieces of paper? Why? Why not? Having this kind of discussion is definitely gonna help you cover that element data point. 
Um, so that is one way of doing it. One thing that I do want to touch on um, that I think is also quite important that I haven't actually said yet, um, while we are talking about hitting all of these points in the curriculum and the way that this activity almost looks like it's just covered the whole thing and it's amazing, um, covering it for one afternoon uh, or in one project isn't going to accurately get you that curriculum coverage. It's um, the way that you can study times tables for one afternoon, but that's not quite going to cut it. It's going to take a bit more represent it's going to take a bit more rep repetition, not representation. It's going to take more repetition. It's going to take a few more iterations, a few more different things. So while this project does look pretty good uh, on paper, it is important to remember that it's going to take um, a couple of different rounds and a couple of different ways to really nail that part of the curriculum. Um, but hopefully this has been able to show you that there are a couple of days worth of classroom activities that will get you a lot of great coverage. Um, so this is just our kind of summary of the way that we've done, including some of the other classroom activities. So you want to start with your discussion definition, doing some surveys, getting some data. Once you've done that, then we can start programming with our micro bits. To do that, we're going to need to do the introduction, get names, get images working, start the radio working, work through our um, <clears throat> different tournament diagrams and how they work to so make sure that the students understand what they're doing um, and then get coding. See how coding is all the way down at the bottom here. Um, it's one of the second last things you'll do in a project like this. Um, so there is a lot of stuff that goes into beforehand and that's um, kind of similar to the curriculum as well. And then you have your class competition and I'm a little bit biased. Um, I think I have a clear winner and then we all eat a copious amount of ice cream. Um, and we've got these little indicators just in the top right hand side here. I'm, I'm not a maths teacher or a science teacher, but uh, it sounds to me like there's definitely some maths curriculum and science curriculum to be touched on here. Yeah, definitely. So you've got, if we're teaching at a year four level, you can definitely uh, tally up your totals and compare the two. That's kind of some basic maths, but it's a brief touching. And then it depends what you're investigating, if you want to call it the science curriculum. Um, but again, that's for you to have a play around with and see how it fits into your schools and your classrooms. Yeah, and um, so it's a way that, you know, digital technologies can be a subject in and of its own, but um, it's relatively easy to get it into these other subjects using small projects like this. So start with something that you want to do uh, and then get mapping and see how far you can take it. Um, so that's everything we had for this session. I know we've gone through really fast and I do apologise, um, but hopefully you'll have access to everything afterwards. Um, and we do put recordings of our webinars up on our YouTube channel, so feel free to um, check us out there. Um, did anyone have any questions for us? Either on the chat or on the annotations or you can hang around afterwards or just send us a message. All right, just um, since we have some time, what I might do in that case is I will jump over here and just show you our unpacking the curriculum page, um, just to help you find everything that we've gone through in this webinar. So the guide that I used was the three and four band. So if I click on unpack just here, we've got the full band description, um, each of the digital technologies concepts, highlighted in their color. And if we scroll down, here is the content descriptor, as I mentioned, and here are the different elements that make up that content descriptor. So if we scroll down, for example, to our data interpretation, you would have seen interpret data and visualize data as the titles I used. Um, and this is the description of that so that you can find them at a later date. If you are working across bands, you can also go straight into the different digital technologies concepts. So there are these concepts and they have um, at least one, sometimes two codes per year group. So for example, down here, specification, algorithms, algorithms is only uh, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, 10. 
Um, but if you just want to have a look at that across bands, you can click through there and you can have them laid out with the elements broken into their different parts. So have a play. Um, like I've mentioned, our resources will have the webinars in teacher resources. So this will go up in the next couple of days and feel free to check out any of our previous ones. There'll be more information and links to the YouTube channel there. Uh, so again, was there any questions at all? Uh, we've got Peter saying, I mostly used make code when doing my bits last year. The blockly coding rock also worked well. We ended up using near pixel strips and with make code, which is awesome. I like near pixel strips with make code. I think I've got some downstairs in my yeah. piece of extra stuff. Um, so for everyone else, near pixel strips are great. They're um, little lights that you can plug into the micro bit and program them to show any color. So they require downloading an extra library. Lindsay, do you want to have a look at that? Sure thing. Is the secondary recorded? Yeah, it will be. So, yes. all so that's happening at the same time as this one. Um, so they'll just be finishing up. But absolutely, that's recorded too. Um, so yeah, there are extensions you can do in Make Code. Just want to, so just to show you again, it's hiding under the advanced tab. Go to extensions. And then NeoPixel. That's this one here. So if you do have some NeoPixels, that's all you really need. Now you have this extra drawer here that you can pull from. Um, it is possibly, it's worth a look if you have any of these lying around. Um, for example, we have a lot of these around the office. These are micro cars also using a micro bit. Um, that's also an extension that you can download from the library. Um, give it a play. If you break it, come to us and we will help fix it and then uh, let us know what you use it for. Um, and also I like to recommend the ice cream challenge, uh, mostly because it means that I then get to finish off my day with a bunch of ice cream. <laughs> So if anyone else feels like ice cream after this, uh, you're not alone, and I did come prepared. <laughs> That's an essential, um, essential trip to the supermarket, I think. I'd say so. Um, I did just pop into this one here and highlight, so this is the Grok Learning Platform. If I open up an incognito window, go to Grok Learning, this is what it'll look like when you land. Um, log in just here there is sso so you can log in with your school login most likely uh, and once you're in click on australian computing academy and bbc microbit and these are the challenges that we have authored they are funded by the federal government until 20 the end of 2020 um, and they're all the ones that are referenced in here so for example, this one here, the Blockly Smart Garden, where you can learn to make a moisture sensor, covers these aspects of the curriculum. And again, this is just the curriculum coverage of just the project itself. So using the same kind of classroom activities that we outlined, using your specification discussion, some class data re um, research and representation, um, will definitely widen the coverage of this. But this is, um, the specific curriculum coverage of this one challenge. And you'll find those just in here. So there's our DT challenge, Smart Garden. Okay, guess we're finishing up a little bit early. Um, where do you get micro cars? Um, if you just search for, what's the best thing to Google, Penny? Oh, there's a link in the chat as well. Oh, brilliant. So that's through Little Bird Electronics. Uh, they're probably a bit short stock at the moment because the world's on fire, but <laughs> it looks like there's 12 units. They're just so little... You can also buy them direct? Yeah, I think so. Um, 